Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Harper and today we're going to start talking about the 72 demons of the Goetia. And I'm going to be sourcing this information from The Goetic Devils by Rev Kane, one of my favorite authors. <clears throat> we're going to I'm going to do two per episode to keep with the not super long video themes. But I will be talking about the <clears throat> Uh, Ars Goetia Hierarchy, which is a collection of 72 of Hell's most prestigious and magnificent devils. The Ars Goetia is one of five ancient manuscripts, each covering a potent aspect of occultism in the left-hand path. <coughs> Excuse me. The Ars Goetia spoke of demons specifically. These five manuscripts are compiled into what is known as the Lesser Key of Solomon, which is a powerful exploration of occultism, magic, and demonology, but we are uncertain about who wrote them. They kind of just showed up in the 17th century by an anonymous occultist. And over centuries following its creation, countless interpretations of the Ars Goetia, Ars Goetia were authored by our occultists from, walk -in, from all walks of the left-hand path. I do not suggest using any of the rituals in the Ars Goetia and only using the Ars Goetia for information about demons because it can come off as really disrespectful to try to bind demons to you without their consent. This book deviates from the majority by not being a reinterpretation or altered iteration of the pre-existing Ars Goetia manuscript. While we discuss the same devils found in the legendary Ars Goetia, the information is offered in a refreshed fashion. This book is entirely original. This, is, this information <clears throat> is original to this book, to Rev Kane. The Goetia Devils does not regurgitate <clears throat> the verbatim tongues of any book. You will, of course, find the same essential information for each spirit. We have striven to ensure, Rev Kane have striven to ensure that the Goetia Devils offers something distinctive to the left-hand path while also preserving the Goetia hierarchy, the history of it. And they took, and he took care to offer details and dignity to each of the 72 demons. <clears throat> so let's just jump right into the meat of the video. <laughs> We're gonna start with, um, the Goetia prints known as Visago, and I will be uh, editing in the correspondence to these demons right around this area, so that if you take notes, you can have what you need just on screen. But he's a prince, he prefers the daylight hours. He is strongest from March 30th to April 3rd, he commands 36 legions, his planet is the sun, summoning elements are <clears throat> like gold, fire, rubies, ash, blue candles, cedar incense. <clears throat> if that Visago provides is he helps offer divine revelations, offering profound discoveries, inciting love, lust, and passion, and bestowing wise familiar demons. And now I'm going to read his description. Visago is known to be an honest devil. He is a true, he is true to the truthful and shall offer the demonologist his ability to unravel all cloaks and covers of secrecy. His proficiencies pertain to revelation. His vision he may bestow upon the sightless and he will offer the perception for which his crown is celebrated. The occultist that pursues discovery will know this spirit to be invaluable. The Sago is masterful in all methods of unveiling and uncovering of deceit, so he can help you uh, see truth where there is lies. <clears throat> the occultist shall know this devil to be very forgiving, he's very generous, and he is very intensely wise. He is an ideal spirit for the novice demonologist secret seeking experience. <clears throat> he can help as a mentor demon. <clears throat> By mortals and devils alike, Prince Visago is held in tremendous renown. He is celebrated by all, 
for his generous and enlightening nature. If the occultist seeks a low-risk foray into the black arts of demonology, the ritual invocation of Prince Visago will prove to be a very powerful starting point <clears throat> during, during ritual, which I will not be describing how to do rituals on my uh, YouTube channel because I don't want to influence people who don't know what they're doing to mess with things that they shouldn't be messing with. But during ritual, the sago should be offered a tithe of goodwill. Of all. He has a lot of summoning elements that I mentioned. He most likes the gold blue candles and the cedar incense. And the demonologist must value every moment of the ritual and absorb all that they witness. This is their opportunity to gain a foothold in Goetia magic. So he is, he's a good begin, beginner demon. He acts as a really good mentor, basically. The second prince that we're going to go over today is Seatree. Um, he prefers the daylight hours as well, and he is strongest from July 12th to the 21st of July. He commands 60 legions, and his planet is Jupiter. His summoning elements are things that he enjoys, such as blue candles, jasmine incense, fire, sapphires, and silver. Gifts that he can bestow upon you are inciting excessive degrees of lust, encouraging pleasure and carnality satisfying the appetites of disciples, and offering guidance to the hedonistic. <coughs> Prince Seatree, he's an, he is a dishonest devil, and known for his wicked nature. However, he will always be truthful to the summoner, judge faithful to the kingdom of hell. So if you are a faithful disciple, you don't have to worry about Seatree being distrustful or dishonest towards you. His gift pertain to carnal desires, like lust, specifically, and the attainment of the fruits of pleasure. He's a hedonistic spirit, and so too are the blessings that he may offer the occultist. The occultist that desires physical satisfaction and earthly delights will find solstice in the company of Seatree. He is proficient in the pursuit of decadence. The demonologist will recognize recognize this spirit to be a reliable mentor upon the left-hand path if they are loyal in their allegiance to the kingdom of hell. Assuming this is the case, Seatree will provide generous and invigorating, will prove, sorry, generous and invigorating to summon, but this should only be attempted by the most adept of demonologists, which means this is not a beginner demon. You need to have a handle of what you're doing, you need to know what you're doing, and you need to be educated in order to work with Prince Seatree. If the occultist is steadfast in their devotion to hell and its glorious eternity, and they are cautious in the process, Prince Seatree is a potent spirit to invoke. As one hails Seatree to ceremony, they must caretake his need for material splendors like sapphires, silver or jasmine incense should be used during the ritual, which means these are required, at least one of these are required. The demonologist should not summon Prince Seatree unless they are vigilant, committed to the kingdom of hell, and bear strong traits of hedonistic desire. That's going to be it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, share with your friends. Uh, check out my donation links in the description, and don't forget to hail Satan.